But if you want to talk in generalities, if you have a patient who's been on these kind of medications, you know, what's worked, what hasn't worked, I want us to be able to talk along those lines, but just change the information. Uh, I'll know whose hand is raised and we'll uh, have you ask the question. The fun part about this is we can do it as a mini internet community, meaning you, uh, once you raise your hand, I can open up your webcam and your microphone, or at least ask permission to, and I think you actually do the clicking on it. With that, we can see and hear you, and you can ask your question directly, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you do that, turn down your speakers, because the speakers will give reverb, uh, most likely. So if you open your microphone, turn down those speakers. And uh, if you're too shy, too introverted, that's fine. You can email us a question, or you could Type in the chat, but we're asking to do email so we can sort it a little bit easier. But you can use the, the chat yeah, if you need to with that as well. So remember that. And for, in any number of ways, there's an infinite number of, of ways of answering this question. But I was thinking about it myself. The one that came to my mind was the wizard's potions, the learned wizard with secret knowledge of chemical potions that will change the mind. Not that. Everybody comes in with those thoughts, but you'd be surprised at the number of, of patients I see that you really have that feeling that they're seeing us as the holder of some sacred, secret knowledge, and that that knowledge and that potion of, of concoction that we give them, in essence, will uh, change their mind in some ways. There's some truth to that. You know, medications do affect you know, mind functioning. Um, but this is one archetype that I run into you know, a fair amount, and we can talk more about that in the discussion phase if, if desired. Another, you know, more of a, not necessarily literal, but uh, another uh, kind of spiritual you know, event occurring with that. We had 75% of people voted. That's, that's good. Um, and the poll really wasn't fair you know, with that. Uh, go back to the presentation. I don't have more slides on that, uh, but we'll hold on that. Uh, I'll put up the poll question, Ryan, and we'll kind of keep the slide on the poll question for a little bit. Um, the, the poll question wasn't really fair with that. There really ought to be a D, but I didn't want to put it down because I thought too many people would choose it, and I wanted to make it more controversial. D, which I think is probably the best answer, is uh, it depends. I mean, it can really be either. If you have a patient in the emergency room that's psychotic. Oh, cute. <laughs> Ryan just typed that in. Thank you, Ryan. Um, if you have a, a patient in the emergency room who is clearly psychotic, you know, convinced you know, aliens have invaded their home, that's hearing voices, the voices are telling them to kill people, and, and uh, et cetera, I mean, that is absolutely A. That's a psychiatric emergency. None of us are going to say, well, why don't you free associate to the murder impulse and say, um, you guys has a lower response rate, and versus schizophrenia is a pretty clear piece. Why else might I prescribe? I'm embarrassed to put up this slide, but with the title Confessions of a Jungian Psychiatrist, I thought, well, what's the economic incentive to prescribe? And this slide, I think, is quite striking. This is really mostly this year. Up until 2013, there wasn't such a disparity between an hour of therapy and an hour of therapy with medications. Um, but they change all the CPT codes. Any of you clinicians know that quite well. January 1st, they changed the CPT codes. Those are the codes that are procedures that we get paid for. And for psychiatry, it varies via insurance, but look at, at this one. Uh, $112 you know, for 60 minutes without medications and $152 uh, with. And Go ahead and raise your hand. Anybody has a thought about this? And I bet you everybody in this room has a thought about that. But if somebody wants to share a, a thought, let's try our open your microphone system. Go ahead and click on that smiley face on the lower right-hand corner of the attendee list. Click raise your hand. We'll try opening a microphone. But I bet you somebody out there has a burning comment on this. Um, what do you think of insurance companies that uh, will pay psychiatrists 112 you know, for no medicines, 152 for the exact same therapy hour with medications. Do we have any brave souls? Oh gosh, not a one. Doesn't somebody want to comment on that? That's such a controversial piece. No, okay. No, no folks. I've got some feedback. Is that somebody's open mic or is that you, Ryan? Okay. Well, anyway. 
if anybody has a comment on that, we'll come back to you. And Ryan, if you notice a comment, on there's the sadness. That kind of goes without saying. They're going to have what we call dysphoria or sadness uh, with that. Okay, so that's depression. That's diagnosing depression. Um, let me comment on that, that piece. The, the difference reflecting the malpractice insurance, that, that is a good point in that as a prescriber, it's much more likely to be sued you know, for that. Our malpractice is probably 10 times or so higher than the, the non-prescriber. My wife is a social worker, and when I see her malpractice bill, I am jealous you know, every year because hers is, is, is a fraction of what ours is and ours keeps going up and lawsuits are prevalent. So that, I think that is true. And maybe it reflects the, the nature of the training and being a physician. Um, but for me in the room, I'm equally trained, I'm equally likely to be sued in many ways, yet I'm making a certain amount if I add medicine and a certain amount if I don't. So that's a uh, internal kind of struggle that I'm, I'm aware of when practicing. Okay, antidepressants options. There's five main SSRIs and then six non-SSRIs. Um, somebody type in what SSRI stands for. That's the next question. Type in the chat what SSRI. Let's see if we can do that first. In the meantime, I need to tell you what SIG ECAPS stands for. SIG back, SIG ECAPS. SIG is Latin for prescribe, E is short for energy, and CAPS for capsules. So SIG E caps prescribes energy capsules. And I don't know why that mnemonic you know, was developed. That's a very old one. When I was in medical school at Duke, gosh, 20, maybe 25 years ago, uh, that was the one we were taught. And that's that stuck with me you know, substantially. Yes, we've got two winners, the SSRIs in the chat box. Um, to this day, when I'm seeing a patient, I'll write out SIG e caps and I'll circle the symptoms that they have and I'll X out the ones that they don't have. And that's a an effective way of, of uh, diagnosing the, the symptoms, or at least listing the symptoms down. So both of you were right. Arnie and Susie were both correct. It is indeed selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And that refers to the synapse. So the, the of, of through uh, medications, yeah, and even ejaculation won't let it uh, go down in most cases. Yeah, it needs to be surgically corrected. So if you have priapism, you go to the ER and get medication before you have the surgeon operating, which is not good. That said, this is very rare. I've seen very few cases. I've dosed trazodone a lot, and even though we worry about that, it's, it's quite rare, so don't worry too much about it. Fistril is okay, but it's got a lot of side effects, and, and I don't like to use it too much. Remeron is very nice. It's a antidepressant, so if they have depression and low appetite and nausea, Remeron can be very useful for sleep. Seroquel, very effective. Uh, but, you know, Seroquel is antipsychotic, so that long list of metabolic syndrome, of uh, hyperglycemia, diabetes issues, tardive dyskinesia, that's a, a long list for, you know, medication that you're really just using for sleep and you've got things that are, you know, less dangerous, you know, there for it. <clears throat> so I wouldn't use Seroquel for sleep unless there's really another reason, you know, why you might, might use it. Okay. Buspar is a unique medication in that it's really only anti-anxiety. Unlike the antidepressants, uh, it is mostly used uh, just for anxiety. There's very little antidepressant effect. It's not a 